without question. Some Nazi criminals did manage to flee to South America, where with only five or so exceptions, they were able to live out their lives. The best known case, of course, of Eichmann, whom you see here on trial in his uh, so-called glass box, the supposedly a bulletproof enclosure in Jerusalem in 1961. He was responsible for the deportation of millions of Jews to their deaths at Auschwitz and other Nazi camps. He was famously abducted in 1960 in Buenos Aires, Argentina, by Israeli intelligence agents. And he was flown to Israel, where he stood trial in Jerusalem the next year. He was convicted, and of course, he was executed. I've already mentioned Klaus Barbie, who was found in Bolivia, and sent to France in 1983. Another well-known case, uh, Dr. Joseph Mengele, seen here at the far left at the Auschwitz death camp complex. Uh, he was the notorious Auschwitz selector and experimenter, and for decades he was the most um, eagerly uh, sought after uh, war criminal in the world, or I should say he was theoretically the most eagerly sought after. There really wasn't much of an effort on the part of uh, Germany in which he had been charged to find him. Uh, in 1985, a joint U.S.-German-Israeli effort to, to, to track him down uh, led to a shallow grave at Hindu, Brazil. It turned out he had died in Brazil in 1979. He had a stroke while swimming. As a physician, he knew exactly what was happening to him. This is uh, way down on my list of ways that uh, I, I, I would like to die. Uh, but uh, die he did. Uh, it, uh, uh, Germany could have found him years earlier by following the money trail. He had a very wealthy family in Germany. They, they own a, a large farm equipment company, and they were secretly supporting him. The way that we finally found Megala was indeed following the money. But again, uh, I believe that comparatively few Nazi criminals fled to South America. Doing so required significant resources that most lacked. More important, as I said, indicated before, few of them really needed to because if they could lay low through 1948, the law enforcement effort in Europe uh, to apprehend them by, at around then uh, largely uh, uh, fizzled out. So the overwhelming majority of the perpetrators of Nazi crimes in fact remained where they had been at war's end in Germany and Austria. And that is surely where the overwhelming majority of the surviving Nazi criminals remain today. Uh, finally, as to this idea that the Nazi hunters found them, knew where they were, reported them to the authorities, and the authorities did nothing, it is certainly true that authorities uh, did not do what they should have done, uh, and that's true of our own country as well. But uh, really, this is what I call the Hollywood conception of the post-war fate of, of Nazi uh, war criminals, uh, best exemplified by the movie Boys from Brazil, uh, which uh, features a, uh, a Nazi hunter figure based on Simon Wiesenthal, the character uh, having been played by Sir Lawrence Olivier, no less. Uh, Simon Wiesenthal and Beata Quarsfeld uh, in France did hugely important work, and in the case of Mrs. Quarsfeld, truly courageous work, to shine the light of public attention on the scandal of unpunished Nazi criminals who were at liberty in Europe uh, and elsewhere, including South America. Without their efforts, uh, I think it is likely, it is it's a virtual certainty, in fact, that the investigation and prosecution of Nazi criminals would have ended completely at some point uh, in the 1960s. In truth, however, from the 1950s onward, hardly any of the criminals were actually found as a result of investigative work by Simon Wiesenthal or other independent so-called Nazi hunters. When they were able, to point to the location of one or another Nazi criminal, it was generally on the basis of tips from people who, for whatever reason, turned the criminals in. And that was an important function. They served as sort of a, a post office box for those uh, tips. What I consider the, to be the legend of the Nazi hunters uh, is principally traceable to, to one case, that of out of Eichmann. Simon Wiesenthal catapulted, catapulted to worldwide fame in the early 1960s on the basis of his purported role in Adolf Eichmann's 1960 apprehension in Buenos Aires. Wiesenthal vigorously asserted his claim to participation in that historic event, and he insisted throughout his lifetime on being introduced at his public speaking engagements 
as the man who had tracked down Eichmann. In truth, however, uh, the Israeli intelligence operation that found um, and, and uh, uh, abducted Eichmann in Argentina had no significant contribution from Mr. Wiesenthal. Indeed, in 1959, as the Israelis were gearing up, based on a, a tip uh, from a, 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 a European Jewish immigrant uh, to Argentina who discovered uh, that his daughter was dating Eichmann's son, and who passed the tip on to the uh, German prosecutor who tipped off the Israelis. So just as the Israelis were preparing to try to capture Eichmann in Argentina, Mr. Wiesenthal was advising the Israelis in writing that he had at last deduced where Eichmann was probably hiding. And where was it, he wrote? Northern Germany. Oops. Uh, unfortunately, um, this kind of failure and, and showm showmanship were, were stocks in trade for the late Mr. Wiesenthal. Uh, the Mengele case is another example. For well over a decade, he fooled reporters into publishing his claims that he, Simon Wiesenthal, was on the verge of arranging for Mengele's arrest in this South American country, that South American country. In the end, uh, as I said, it turned out that Mengele had already been dead for years. And by the way, that he'd been living in just about the only country of South America that Simon Wiesenthal had not identified as his hideout, Brazil. For anyone who's, who's interested, uh, the subject of, of Mr. Wiesenthal's claims is addressed at considerable length in my 1993 book on the Baltheim Affair, and I also explain why it was that Kurt Baltheim's principal public defender was Simon.